So we want to work out a representative value to characterize this alternating voltage supply. So I've just sketched out this graph so that it has a frequency of 50 hertz. That's the same as the mains electricity in the UK. I've set the peak value of the voltage to just be one volt, just to keep the mathematics a little bit simpler. So in this case, the equation of the graph is V is equal to sine of 100 pi T. So our first thought might be, well, the mean value would be a good way to characterize the voltage because we, we can't really characterize the peak voltage because that only happens for a little instant in time over one period. And as we can see, the voltage is changing the whole time. So maybe the mean would be a better way of doing things. We can work that out by integrating the function between 0 and 0 0.02 and then dividing by the, uh, the time period of that wave. So going back to our graph, we've simply integrated the whole thing and then we've divided by the time taken to do that one cycle, 0 0.02. Now that actually gives us an answer of zero. And if we look at the graph, we can see that by inspection. The area above the axis, which counts as positive, is equal to, but opposite in sign, to this area here, because area below the axis counts as negative. So when we add this one to this one, we just get zero. And that will always be the case for a sinusoidal wave. So measuring the mean value and giving us an answer of zero is, is not much help. So how can we overcome this? Well, what we do is we square the top graph and that gives us something like this. So now all of our values are positive. And if we work out the voltage mean square value, which is the same technique, but this time we've squared the sine wave, that gives us a value of a half. So what we've just worked out is the voltage mean square value is 0.5. But the unit, because we squared everything, is actually volts squared. Well, what does that mean? Well, it doesn't really mean anything in particular. So we have to account for that in some way. So what we do, whoops. What we do is if we square root the unit V squared, then that just takes us back to volts. And obviously volts is the thing we're interested in. That was the, the unit of the original graph. So the thing we actually work out is the voltage root mean square value, or in other words, V RMS, R root mean square. So the RMS su um, subscript there, that actually tells us what to do. So, and we do it in reverse. So we do the square, then we work out the mean, and then we square root it. So to work out V RMS, we take the voltage equation, and typically you'd have a number in front here, but the technique is still the same. You're going to square that. OK, so if you had a number out the front here, you would need to square that as well. You integrate that between 0 and 0 0.02. You work out the mean by dividing by the time period. And then having done all of that, you square root it. OK, so that's how you work out the root mean square voltage. Now, we've already worked out that the mean square voltage, the bit in the square root, is equal to a half. So that's going to be equal to the square root of a half. Whoops, that didn't work very well. Equal to the square root of a half, which is 1 over root 2. Okay, so that went a bit messy there, but I'll just tidy up a little bit on the next page. So what we've just seen is the final result. I did a simplified version of this, but hopefully this will give you the idea. The root mean square voltage is equal to the peak voltage divided by root 2.